I want the Lord to use me today. Sincerely, I believe he's going to speak to somebody. So I take your attention to the book of Matthew, chapter 8. The book of Matthew, chapter 8, and we'll begin at verse 23. The book of Matthew, chapter 8, and verse 23. Now, when Jesus got into the boat, his disciples followed him, and suddenly there was a great storm that arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with the waves, but Jesus was snoozing. The bros came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, uh, save us because we're about to die. We are perishing. And he said unto them, why are you fearful? Oh, you of little faith. Then he arose and he rebuked the winds and the sea. And where there had been a great storm, now there is a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? When he was come to the other side, to the country of Decapolis or Gadara or Gerasenes, there met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs exceedingly fierce so that no one could pass by that way. By the help of God's Spirit, I want to preach to you on this Sunday morning I want to give somebody hope this morning. I want to infuse somebody with faith. I want to encourage somebody. I want to come along some precious child of God, some saint of God, and I want you to get your tenacity back. I want you to get your determination back. I want you to get your joy back. And so I want to preach to you on this Sunday morning on this simple subject, cloudy with a chance of rain. Cloudy with the chance of rain. The Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. A little bit better translation would be where the Spirit has lordship, there is liberty. And I believe that He is the only one that has authority and jurisdiction in this house. And I want to preach about that King this morning. Can we just lift up our hands one more time? I don't want us to beg God. I don't want us to ask him for anything. I want us just to bring gratitude to him. Can we do that? Lord, on behalf of me and my Goodlandsville family, we give you gratitude and thanksgiving for what you are going to do in the next few moments of this service. God, I, I celebrate your sovereignty in this room. You are the only wise God. You do all things well. I pray, God, that we would not just come and we would not just visit horizontally, but, God, I pray that there would be a vertical visitation in this room. We need the miraculous, God, to intervene into this place. You are not an interruption. You are welcome in this house to abide and to tabernacle and to feel and to heal. Let my mouth be your megaphone. Go beyond every prayer. Go beyond our practice. Go beyond our preparation. And do what only you can get credit for. I thank you for it by faith. In Jesus' name. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, I feel a witness. I feel a witness of the power of God. More than just a decibel level, but as a sign of faith. Would you clap your hands as loud as you have all service? But I dare you just to wiggle your toes and move your fingers and just wave your hands and just... Come on, let the spirit world know that you came with a made-up mind to receive. Woo! Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God bless you, you may be seated. I am not alone. Thank you, Brother Jeremy. Brother Billy, what a ministering song that's been. Thank you, thank you. The Bible tells us a very intriguing story. It's the story that has Jesus standing on the shore giving the bros, giving those close to him, giving the disciples an invitation to go deeper. On this day, Jesus is inviting them to RSVP for the deep. 
to leave the shallows behind, to leave the shoreline behind, but to also leave their past paradigms behind, to leave their past references behind. Today, Jesus is going to challenge them to go to the other side. But the other side is Decapolis. It is Gadara. It is Gerasenes. It is, it is the capital of sin. It is where the heathens abound. It is quite literally translated the land of the cast out ones. And yet today, Jesus tells those closest to him, we are going to the other side. Now, Scripture is quite intentional. It is strategic. Quentin, please tell me your name is Quentin. Okay. They have the ability to make it to the other side by foot. They can walk around the Sea of Galilee and they can make it to their same destination. But Jesus does not allow them the luxury to circle around what they are supposed to step into. So it was then, so it is now. Deep is still calling to deep. I remind you on this Sunday morning that you are just, you're not just another Christian plopped on a pew oozing through life. But deep is truly calling to deep. It is not the will of God that we would be seduced by being just another satisfied saint in 2023. But something has to call us from another world. Something has to beckon us. Something has to invite us. And we have to willingly submit and say yes. They find themselves stepping into the boat. They find themselves launching into the deep. And all of a sudden it happens. The clouds begin to brew. A storm begins to arise and Sean, all of a sudden raindrops begin to fall and they find themselves in a stinking storm. It's all right, they've been in storms before, it's, it's not a big deal, but, but now the waves get higher and the wind begins to billow and now they are finding themselves in a topsy-turvy environment. They are finding themselves in an unstable moment. Isn't it just like the Lord to invite you into the unknown, to invite you into trust, to invite you into solace, to invite you into his sovereignty, and then you find yourself in a stupid storm? Are we live streaming? Dear God, please forgive me. My mother will be watching. We're not supposed to say stupid, but it Sometimes you just find yourself in a silly storm. And that's when the questions begin to arise. What if I just leave all the spiritual stuff to somebody else? What if I just leave all the deep stuff to somebody else? Maybe I could just resort to just living life, checking in to Christianity on Sunday morning, checking out and just living my life. But can I remind you that the Lord is calling you. Deep is calling to deep. I, I remember another story of a disciple being called out upon treacherous waters. And, and, and we, we, we celebrate that he began to walk on uh, water, but, but we kind of focus mostly on the fact that he begins to glance at the waves and now he's gazing at the waves and now he's slipping into and sinking beneath the waves. But we forget that God in flesh, Jesus Christ, reaches out and pulls him back up. And then I think we forget to celebrate that now he is walking where he used to sink. I'm preaching to somebody that after this weekend, you are about to step and march where you used to fall. You are about to pray where you used to be prayerless. You are about to be pure where you used to relapse. You are about to be strong where you... Can I remind somebody on a Sunday morning that beginning to sink is not the same thing as sunk? Ooh, Sister Karen, can I be real this morning? There's been some times I almost backslid and I almost gave up. And I almost, I can't tell y'all that, but I didn't. 
I, I, I got to pause here for just a moment. There's some things that you almost did that you didn't do. David said, my feet almost slipped. He didn't say they slipped. The prodigal said, I almost ate the pig's food, but he didn't. Forgive me, maybe it's ADD, maybe it's the Holy Ghost, but I just get a little excited when I think about some things that almost took me out, but they did not take me out. My faith was hijacked when the diagnosis came. I, I wasn't quite expecting the valley. I, I almost sunk, but I did not say I'm preaching to somebody. I'm preaching to a mama. I'm preaching to a daddy. You did not sink. You're in the house of God. You, and now you're walking with, where you used to sink. Now you're walking where you used to give into anxiety. Now you're walking where you used to give into condemnation. Now you're walking where you used to have church hurt. Now you're walking. Now you're walking on top of what used to pull you down. Somebody needs to stand to their feet. You need to wave your hand. And you need, I know we're not where we need to be. But you need to celebrate that the right now you is not the yesterday you. You're not going to die in the deep. You're going to walk in the deep. He's going to take you by the hand. He's going to bring your marriage through. He's going to bring your business through. He's going to bring your mind through. He will bring this church through. I, I don't know what this means, Pastor, but I just feel like telling the devil I'm not dying in the deep. I'm not dying in the deep. I'm not dying in the deep. This is not where my epitaph will be read. This is not where my grave will be found. This is not where I will be buried. I will rise and I will walk on top of what used to bring me down. I will not die in the deep, but the Lord Jesus Christ is going to hold my hand. I'm not just trusting him. He believes in me. He is for me. He is trusting in me. Can I, can I keep preaching just a few more minutes? Caitlin, can I keep? Oh, there's two Caitlins. Y'all are trying to throw me off. Caitlin number two. Kate, can I keep on preaching? It is Kate, right? Can, can you just tell the whole church it's Kate? Okay, I just, I'm trying to recover. I'm trying to walk where I used to sink. Lauren. I, uh, can y'all clap one more time? Now, in case y'all thought that was spiritual, I was just trying to catch my breath. All of a sudden, they, they're in the middle of a storm. And uh, again, we, we, we tend to highlight that they're losing faith. But I want to point out something on a Sunday morning. Jesus is asleep. The master is napping. The rabbi is snoozing. And so somebody has to decide which disciple is going to wake him up. Hey, hey, bro, I had a vote with me, myself, and I. It's unanimous. You're waking him up. No, 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 I need you to wake him up. No, no, I'm not waking him up. You wake him up. We're about to die, fam. Somebody wake up. Hey, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Hey, 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 Jesus. <laughs> Jesus? Yo. Hey, Zeus. Wake up. We are about to die. Lord, even in their feebleness, even when their faith was lacking, they did not let go of lordship. Let me invite you into some of my prayers. I don't understand life right now, Lord. I don't understand why this was not healed, Lord. When I asked to be anointed, I did not ask to be broken. Lord, I am losing my mind. Lord, I don't understand you, Lord. I do not. 
But no matter where I am, you are still Lord. You will still Lord. You are still Lord. The storm will not steal lordship. The storm will not rob lordship. You are still on the throne. Even when I am in the middle of the storm, you are still on the throne. Even when I'm in the ER, you are in the middle of radiation, he is Lord. In the middle of suicidal thinking, he is Lord. In the middle of attacks coming against your mind, he is Lord. In the middle of your bank account running dry, he is still Lord. Sometimes the most dangerous thing you can say to be a threat to the adversary is these simple words. He's still Lord. He's still Lord. He's still my Lord. We're about to die. Lord. And he gets up. And I wonder if he just stretches and yawns, cracks his back. And he says, oh, ye of little faith. Because what they don't realize, I need to use somebody. Gentry, can I use you? Run up here real quick. Run up here real quick. Run in the Greek means run. My man, you wearing kill shots? Let's go. And uh, I need, uh, um, you think Malachi would want to help me? Malachi, can you come help? Oh, we can't leave your brother out. Oh, this, the pressure's on. It starts with an E, doesn't it? His name starts with an E? It's Ethan, right? Oh, Ethan's coming. He said, <laughs> he said call me Alexander, call me Nathaniel. I'm coming. Come on, man. And uh, what, what you trying to flex all this money for? Is it your birthday? Is it really your birthday? This is the moment I've been waiting for. Sister Karen is here. James is here. Any other scouts that are here, y'all get ready. What key are we going to sing this in? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Ha are you listening, Sister Karen? Happy birthday. This is my part. To you. Come on. If I sign a contract and I'm on the next EP, of, of Good Let's Feel, Praise and Worship with Brother Jeremy and Sister Karen and James. I'm giving you full credit, all right? All right, but now back to the sermon. I need Thatcher. Thatcher, run up here. Run up here. Run up here. I, I need y'all to just stand over here. Stand right there. Stand right there. Come on, Gentry. Stand right there. And uh, any birthdays that we missed? Holidays? Anniversaries? All right, just making sure. Um, the disciples don't realize it. Jesus is rebuking them. Oh, you of little faith. They don't understand that they are in a storm on the way to a storm. All they can see is all they can see. But if all you see is all you see, you have not seen everything. Because the crosshairs of Christ are upon something, someone that they have not seen. All they realize, all they perceive is that they're in the middle of a storm. Now, do they look like they're in the middle of a storm? I don't think so. No, 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 don't, no, 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 no. <laughs> do not tempt me. I would never do that. Yes, I would. <laughs> Thatcher. You shouldn't have beat me at pickleball. That's all I'm saying. Come over here. The Bible didn't just say it was a storm. The Bible says it was a great storm. So now they look like they're bitter. You still don't. I, I, I've got grace. We're just going to. You, you, you need a little bit more storm. There we go. There we go. They're in a storm on the outside. But what they don't realize is they are on their way to a storm on the inside. Because you can't always see the effects of a storm on the inside. And I'm speaking to some saints of God. Pastors missed you. 
I have missed you. Nobody's prayed for you today yet. Nobody's honed in on the storm that's frothing over internally. But the Christ, the Christ that you love and the Christ that loves you sees you when nobody else sees you. He can see what you're trying to hide from your spouse. And he can, he can see what you're trying to hold from everybody else because you're afraid of not being perceived as spiritual and having enough faith. He sees it. He sees it. And so he loves a soul so much that he is willing to put the disciples in a storm to go to a storm. Can I preach just a few more minutes? The Bible says that there is a man that is living in the tombs. He is full of demons. He is full of despair. He is full of, I need somebody else. Quentin, can I use you? Run up here, run up here. Um, can I use you? Brian? Oh, God, I'm telling y'all, y'all are messing with my blood pressure today. I want you to watch what happens. The Bible says, I, I need you to be Jesus, because I, I, think, I think Jesus would be looking GQ like that. I, I, I need you to stand over here with the disciples. And uh, Quentin, I need, I need you to be the, the guy with devils and demons. I'll give you a Chick-fil-A gift card. You'll just need to go home and load it. The Bible says that there is a man who is living in the caves. He is living in the graves. He is living among death. And the Bible says that he cries day and night in the mountain. His life is a 24-7 cycle of suicidal thinking and anger and regret. He's crying out night and day. In, in, in the mountains, you, you, can, you, can, you can be in a high place and still be at your very low. You can have the job and you can, you can have the new SUV and you can, you can have the money and you can have the status and you can have all the optics and yet still be at your very lowest internally. And sometimes that is what confuses us the most. How can I be living the high life over here and yet still be at my very low right here? That dichotomy of humanity of feeling the presence of God on Sunday and yet being overwhelmed by your humanity on Monday. Who am I preaching to right now? He begins to see something that he has never seen. Oh, he's seen people caught in a storm. He's seen a boat in the middle of the sea. But all of a sudden, he begins to perceive something he has never seen. There is a great storm, the Bible tells us. But all of a sudden, a man, a stranger to him, we know him as a savior, but this man is a stranger to him steps up in front of the boat, begins to speak, and the Bible says where there has been a great storm, now there is a great calm. Can I just pause right now? You may think this is uh, re revival rhetoric. You may just think this is evangelistic hype, but I've got Bible for this. Heaven will not be outdone by hell. Where there was a great storm, there was, show me the wickedness of our world. Show me all the data, and I'll show you a canvas in which God is going to bring the greatest masterpiece because where sin does abound, grace does much more. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how hellish your home life has been. It doesn't matter the family tree that you come from. It doesn't matter the drugs and the... It doesn't matter the stats, respectfully, of this city. I bring you a God that will not be outdone by the adversary. I bring you an advocate that can do great wonders.
where there has been great wickedness. So I want you, I want to invite you to see what this man sees as he steps out of the cave, as he comes from the corner cowering in fear and his naked eye begins to behold a boat caught in a storm and he sees a stranger stand up in the middle of that boat and in the middle of that storm and though he cannot hear what he is saying, he can see the effects of what he is speaking. All he knows is that there is lightning and there is thunder and there is rain and there's turmoil and it's a lot like what's going on within him. But then he sees his mouth moving. He sees him pointing. He's surrounded by distress. He's surrounded by disciples that are fragmented in their trust. But this one man is pointing to the wind with command. He is speaking with authority. And all of a sudden, the waves quiet. The rain ceases. The lightning disappears. And where there has been insanity, there is now serenity and solace and peace. And I just happen to think that something began to bow up on the inside of him, Addy. And I think something said within himself. And this is what I think it was. If that man, if that man can calm a storm on the outside, I wonder if he can calm a storm on the inside. If the waves have to obey him, I wonder if my anger has to obey him. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if the wind has to submit to him. If my condom nation and my idiosyncrasies and my regret will too and the Bible says that he runs he runs and he falls at the feet of Jesus can I just can I just pause and tell some of us right now I don't want to rebuke you I want to instruct you I want to encourage you some of us some of us are more I need to pause some of us are more bound by our cooperation than our chains. I've seen people come into the house of God bound and shackled. And you know what they do? They cooperate. But then I've seen saints of God. I've seen mothers and fathers. I've seen widows. I've seen elders. I've seen young adults. I've seen teenagers come in under more duress, under more attack. And they're bound and they're shackled. But you know what? The, you know what? They made up in their mind, I will not cooperate. And by the second song, something began to happen. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is lordship. Something began to break. Something began to snap. Something began to shift. And the Bible says... The Bible says he finds himself at the feet of Jesus. He did not cooperate with the chains that were holding him. It says that he broke. <laughs> every fetter that was placed upon him, every rope that was placed upon him, every shackle that was placed upon him, he broke it. He did not cooperate. You don't have to either. Finds himself at the feet of Jesus. And the Bible says that there is a conversation. I need somebody. I need, uh, I need somebody else. Um, Trenton, can, can I use you? I want you to just stand right here. This is what happens. There is a, a dialogue between the divine and the demonic. And this is what hell said. Don't torment us before our time. Don't torment us before our time. I need your mean mug. Don't torment us before our time. One more time. Don't torment us before our time. Okay, you got the job. You got, you got the job. You're coming back for the second interview. Don't torment us before our time. Uh, this is not going to be for everybody, but it's going to be for a few somebodies. Hell had the audacity to tell Jesus Christ, the creator in chief of the universe, the one that was before time, after time, yet always in time, you're too early. So if a demon has the audacity 
to intercede that Jesus is too early. Don't mock me if I have the audacity to intercede that Jesus is not too late. Demons have to beg. You get to march boldly into the throne room of grace. Demons have to beg, but you get to intercede before your advocate. I just feel like telling somebody, I'm almost done, musicians didn't come, but I feel like telling somebody, you need to bombard heaven, and you better not let a demon out intercede you. You need to make it, it's not too late. It's not too late for mama. It's not too late for my baby. It's not too late for my health. It's not too late for my spiritual. It's not too late for my city, for my neighborhood, for my dreams, for my prayers Woo. it's not too late you see it one more time it's not too late it's not too late it's not too late I'm not just speaking that to you I'm speaking it on behalf of you I'm not just speaking it to this sanctuary I want to speak it to the spirit world it's not too late it's not too late it's not too late it's not too late not too late. I'm gonna say it one more time. It's not too late. If you believe that, you'll pray again. If you believe that, you'll believe again. If you believe that, you'll stay an extra 15 minutes in prayer. Why would I wanna pray if I am convinced that it's too late? But you don't have to beg, you get to conversate. You get to commune. You get to reason. You get to talk with the maker of every molecule. Demons don't get to do a lot of talking. They have to do a whole lot of listening. You get to talk and God will listen. Jesus asked a simple question. What's your name? He just asked that, what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? You know what the response was? Legion. Legion. I need that mean mug. Legion. I need that angry, scary voice. Legion. <laughs> you got the third interview. <laughs> See, Lauren's scared to play now. Lauren, you can play. Um, can, Quentin, can I ask you a really, a really profound question? It, it's going to really stretch your, uh, your IQ, and uh, it, it may be a lot of pressure, but don't cave. I believe in you. Um, Quentin, what is your first name? Quentin. Correct. What's your middle name? Leroy. Leroy. No comment. What's your last name? White. Quentin. Leroy. Lacroix. L Leroy. Leroy. Quentin. What he said. White. Correct. So your first name is not Legion. Your middle name is not Legion. Your last name is not Legion. Are you positive? Are you sure? Hand on the Bible app. Legion was not the name of the man. Legion was the name of the one who was speaking on behalf of the man. And I remind you yet again, heavenly callings are going out. Deep is calling to deep. But there's too many hellish answers in response to heavenly callings because you are letting something speak for you. I remind you on this Sunday morning, you have to speak for yourself. 
you have to speak for yourself. You have to speak for yourself. You must speak for yourself. I want us to stand all across this room right now. I'm speaking over homes. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm speaking over homes. I'm speaking over marriages. I'm speaking over saints of God. I'm speaking over men and women. There is no situation, there is no scenario, there is no dilemma in which Jesus Christ does not have lordship. Paul said, I say unto you again, I write unto you again. I'm repeating to you again, to this church, to this congregation, Nothing has the ability to rob him of lordship unless you allow it. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. There is no one beside him. No one before him, no one behind him. He knows not another. So if you know of another that can take him out of his throne, he does not know it. He's, he asked, he says, where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? The Landon Gore 2025 translation, not yet on your Bible app, is this. When a authority speaks, nobody can undo it unless they are of equal or higher authority. So let me say it again. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. David said this. Once God has spoken Twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God. What I am about to say is not to be insensitive, but it is to encourage you and inspire you. Some of you don't need a new word. You just need to hear an old word again. Because God's word is not old, it is eternal. It does not rust, it does not diminish. The prophet said, I recalled to my mind, therefore I have hope. I'm speaking to somebody in this room right now. God has given you words. It may have come through your pastor over this pulpit. It may have come through prophetic ministry. It may have come in your personal private time of devotion. It may have came through a song. God gave you a word. And if the king speaks a word, check the forecast all you want. He will still reign. And he will keep reigning. And he will keep reigning. And he will keep reigning. He will keep reigning. He will always reign. Because he, his is the kingdom. And the power. And the authority. And the dominion. And the rulership. Forever and ever. So this is what I want to invite you to do. I want you to close your eyes for just a moment. I want you to go back to a word that the Lord has given you. Maybe it was five months ago. Three years ago. Maybe it's been 27 years ago. I want you to go back to that word. Maybe you, you, you feel like You've only known Jesus for a few weeks, a few days, and you, 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 you don't feel like you have a word. Open your eyes for just a moment. You have this word. You have Genesis to Revelation. I, I'm trying to stop, but when, when Jesus was opposed by Satan himself, you know what he responded with? It is written, it is written, it is written. It only took three verses to send Satan fleeing. You have a word. You have a word. So now I want you to close your eyes one more time. I want you to go back to a word. 
Perhaps it came through your pastor's wife. Perhaps it came through your prayer partner. Perhaps it came through the podcast. Perhaps, perhaps it came through a sermon. Perhaps it came through a dream. Perhaps it came through a verse. I want you to go back to that word. Now I want you to bring that word with you to the front right now. Would you do that? Would you leave your aisle? Would you leave your pew? And would you, would you cascade into this altar right now? Would you come in as close as you can?